Okay, this is a dangerous one. I don't feel, my personal opinion, that this should be taught to students until they have mastered factoring. Why do you need to master factoring? I believe you need to master fa factoring because it teaches you number sense. It teaches you how to manipulate numbers in your head quickly, just teach, gives you verifies, gives you some more skills to use. The better you are manipulating, manipulating numbers for whatever trivial thing it is, the better you're going to be at math, the less you're going to get stumped on BS, the less time actually it takes for you to finish and complete problems. So <clears throat> all of these videos, all of these tutorials can be found on my website, www.nkinfinity.com. For all of you that hate to factor, I'm going to teach you how to factor today using the TI Inspire, which means you probably are now going to skip. Now, I don't let my kids do this until like March, maybe I think I teach to them, after we've done an enormous amount of factoring and stuff, and they've done it all year long. Then I'm like, all right, you've done it. You've done it now for three years. It's time. So... I like to get them somewhere around March. I teach this to them, but not in be time before. So anyway, we're going to do it two ways today. We're going to do it graphically, and then we're going to use a feature on the calculator that will help us with just the factoring part of it, okay? So we're going to solve this quadratic graphically. The easiest way to solve a quadratic graphically is just to, well, you guessed it, graph it. So there is our quadratic. We're just going to graph it and see what our answers are. So we'll go B, we'll hit B, we'll type in 3x squared minus 17x plus 10. Hit enter, there it is. There's my two answers. I don't know what they are, so I'm going to go menu, analyze graph, and where the solutions are are called roots or zeros. So you need to find a zero. When you get this dotted line, you're going to be moving your finger along this thing. You get this dotted line that says, well, get to the left side of one of your roots. Okay, there I am. Now it says, go to the right side of one of your roots. Okay, there I am. All right, there's one of my roots. 0.6 repeating. So you need to know that's x equals two-thirds. Menu, analyze graph, zero. Now it appears like it's four, but I'm not really sure, or five, excuse me, five. So I'll move my finger back and forth, get to the left side, click. Now I'm going to get to the right side, click, and there it is, 5, 0. X equals 5. Now to do this graphically, you'd have to probably come over here, go to the table, and then, oops, and then find like the first point that's going to be able to, like this 0, 10 would be the first point you can graph, then 1, negative 4, 2, negative 12, 3, negative 14. This one's off the graph. 4, negative 10, 5, 0, and that's it. You graph it, and then we need to see where it hits the x-axis. And those are the roots. Now I'm going to show you something else. And now again, what I'm about to share with you, and I'm not kidding about this. I know it sounds like I'm kidding, but I'm not kidding about this. should not really be taught to kids that before they're really ready and able to factor. For those of you that hate the factor, this is a nice little workaround. Anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to put this into our calculator. We know that we're going to get something like this. And let's say our answers, let's say our answers when we are done, let's say in these parentheses were x minus 5 and x plus 3. Well, wouldn't that mean my two answers were x equals positive 5 and x equals negative 3? Sure. So if I gave you these, couldn't you give me these just by using opposite signs? Now, what if I made it a little bit more complicated? What if I said the answers were 3 minus 4? 3x minus 5 and 2x plus 3. What if I said those were the answers? Those are the, those are the factor. You'd have to say, okay, I know that 3x minus 5 equals 0. I'll bring over the 5, so I get 3x equals 5. I'll bring over the 3, 
divide by three. So my answer would be five thirds. So if I gave you the answer of five thirds, could you remember, oh yeah, return the x here, and then uh, bring the five over opposite sign. So in this case, my answer would be x equals, bring the three over, make a negative three, divide by two. Bring the two back, it's two x. And then bring the three back, it's plus three. So I'm gonna teach you to work backwards. We're just going to get the roots, and we're going to do it not graphically like I did, because that's kind of more of a pain in the neck. We're going to use a quick feature of the calculator. So let's get rid of this. We don't need this. Control T, home. So we're just going to go right into calculator mode, go right to our scratch pad, and we're going to go menu, three, three, one. In March, you hear me say menu, three, three, one at all the time. Menu, three, three, one. Is it a set? By the way, this works for many degrees polynomials. Is it a second degree polynomial? Yes. Do I want real or imaginary numbers? I probably want real for now. Later on, we'll do imaginary. Click OK. OK, tell me what those, tell me what those numbers are. Well, my, num my, my things are 3, negative 17, and 10. So 3, negative 17, and 10. And then click OK. Is that your quadratic? Yep. Are you solving for x? Yep. Click OK. So it tells you your two answers are two-thirds and five. So my answers are x equals two-thirds and x equals five. Well, this one's easy. It just goes back with a minus five. Well, this one's positive as well, so I know it's going to be negative. The three slides back here and makes three x, and the two goes here, and you factored it. And the interesting thing is nobody knows how you factored it. You just did it. Because I did that thing in my head. Let's try this one. Man, how would you like to run into that problem and have to do it on your own? We're going to do it both algebraically and graphically. So I'm going to show you how to do it graphically. So we're going to go over and use the graph. Oops, doc B this crap. Doc B. And so 7x squared plus 40x. 7x squared plus 40 x plus 12. Enter. Okay, there's my two answers. I don't know what they are. No idea. So menu, analyze graph, intersection, get to the left side, what happens to my intersection? Menu, analyze graph, intersection. I am not able to do intersection for some reason. Oh, not intersection. Come on. Menu, analyze graph, zero. Zero is what we're looking for. Intersections where two graphs hit. Zero. Click and click. There's what, what the heck? There's one of my answers. I, that's really weird. Negative 5 point. Might ask you, ask you to round that one. Negative 5.39. Boy, I hope this thing factors. Negative 5.39663. That is a really weird answer. Let's try to find the other one. I think this one, I thought this one factored. Menu, analyze graph, zero, click, click. Another really weird answer. Negative 0 0.317659. Negative 317659. Point. All right. I thought it factored. Maybe it doesn't. But we're about to find out. We're about to find out. We're going to go back into this mode. We're going to go menu. 3, 3, 1. Yes, it's a second degree polynomial. What are my roots? 7, 40, and 12. 7, 40, and 12. And enter. Oops. All right, there they are. So this is one I that didn't have actual, you can't factor this one, so sorry about that. These are, this one, we'd have to use the quadratic formula. Well, I don't know what happened there. Oh, this was supposed to be a minus. So I think if I go up here and change it. By the way, if you ever make a mistake, you just highlight that. You go up there, and these can be changed. You click here, say put a minus. I think, yeah, there it is. So let's say that was the answer. Let's say I got it actually right. I actually put a minus in there. Sorry about that. Wrote the problem wrong. Shh, minus. So I have two sets of parentheses equal to zero. My two answers are x equals and x equals 
negative 6 and 2 over 7. Well, this one's easy. Just goes in with a positive sign. X plus 6. I don't know what that thing was supposed to be. It's supposed to be an arrow. Okay, so this one, because it's positive, is going to be negative. The 7 slides back, so it's 7x and then minus 2. All right, one more to go. Man, I love coffee. All right, so this one, I checked, it works. So let's do this one graphically. So let's go to home. We'll go into graph mode. 10, negative 11, and 6. So 10x squared minus 11x minus 6. Enter. Ooh, those are weird answers. Looks like. Looks like maybe 1.5 and something weird down there. So let's go into menu. Analyze graph zero this time, not intersect. Click, click. All right, there's one of our answers. Negative 0.4. Okay. Menu, analyze graph zero. Click, click, 1.5. So my two answers are x equals negative 0.4 and x equals 1.5. Well, if you, did, if you did this, somebody would know you're up to something because it would be like, okay, how did you get those answers, weirdo? So we got to fact this thing. So let's come up with the fractional answers. These are these would be okay. These would be okay. But we're going to come up with the fractional answers, which would be x equals something and x equals something. So let's see how we do this using poly tools. So you go back here and it's menu, 3, 3, 1. 3 is algebra. Three is polytools and finding the roots of a polynomial. Click, click. And let's say we go, I forgot what they were. 10, negative 11, and 6. 10, negative 11, negative 6. Click OK. That's my polynomial. Yes, click OK. There's my two answers. X equals negative 2 fifths. And X equals 3 halves. So this one was positive, so it's going to be negative. This one was negative, so it's going to be positive. The 5 goes out front, 5x, and 2. The 2 comes back out front, because that was from the division, right? So 2x minus 3. And you can always check your work, you know. By the way, a great way to check to see if you something factored something correctly is you've got this thing factored. Now type this in. So I'll just hit tab. Let me go back to graph. So I hit tab, and I'm going to type in what I factored. 5x plus 2, parenthesis, 5x plus 2, parenthesis, parenthesis, 2x minus 3. Now, if you factored it correctly, you should see, you should see a red graph right over this blue graph. So I click Enter, boom. Red graph, graphed right over perfectly over the blue graph, that means you factored it correctly. All right, kids, that's it. Little taste of factoring and using the quadratic to, or the uh, calculator to solve quadratic. Catch you on the flip side. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. If you want to see a video on something you don't know how to do, just email me, let me know, I'll put it up.